Hi, my name is Brenda Morgan. Uh, today we are going to be talking about sweeteners by popular demand, uh, sugar, all different forms of sugar. Um, as you can see here on this slide, the first slide, I just kind of put this as the background so you could see 61 different names for added sugars. This is sugars. This isn't even getting into the artificial sweeteners so much. These are just different names that the food companies may or may not use on their labels. At least 61 names. There's actually probably more than that, but um, just giving you an idea of how complex this subject is. This is one of the most difficult presentations that I've ever put together because there's so much to talk about. Um, we can talk about just the science, right? Just the sugars and what is a sugar and then how much um, we can have or not have um, or what's recommended too uh, for a healthy diet, for healthy life. Um, all the different names of sugar. We can do a little bit of investigative work. We can do a little Sherlock Holmes with our magnifying glass, looking at those labels that we can't quite read, right? Um, the hidden sugars, just bringing your awareness to how much sugar is in the processed foods that we might be eating. Things that we think are savory or salty might be crackers or uh, bars or yogurts or ketchup or something like that, they actually put a lot of sugar in it. Uh, or there might actually be a lot of sugar in it. It's something that, you, that we're going to talk a little bit more about. Um, so something interesting, when I was talking about how difficult it was for me to put this presentation together because there's so much information. Um, and... Uh, uh, I felt like also I was getting very passionate about it because when we start talking about processed foods and uh, going out to restaurants, right? So you've got all these food scientists and uh, food manufacturers and restauranteurs and businesses that they are des designing the food because they want you to come back. They, they are hijacking your brain with salt, sugar, fat, so that when you're walking through the grocery store, you can't even help it, right? Um, and that was the part when I was making this presentation that I was kind of like, I was like, okay, rein it in, Brenda. You know, <laughs> like, because yeah, I just want to go, I, I'm reading all the time, and I'll give you some of these books that I'm reading that are talking about what actually is happening in the food industry with the food that you're eating and i was talking to my son about it yesterday and uh i started like getting really passionate about this is what they're doing and i told him uh this is what i'm going to talk about tomorrow and uh, i said but i'm trying to rein it in I'm trying to like keep it uh scientific and practical be pragmatic about it and he goes he goes well, actually you know our our pastor at our school, uh, the best presentation he ever gave is when he just really got filled with the spirit and he showed the passion. And so I said, you know what? You're changing the course of how I'm going to do this presentation tomorrow. I said, you know what? You're right. So, <laughs> so we're going to, we're going to be practical. We're going to be pragmatic, but sometimes I'm going to go like, look, this is what's happening right now because of because food scientists and food manufacturers are finding that bliss point. Have you heard of the bliss point? The bliss point is that place on your palate where you get just the right um, balance of salt, sugar, fat that you can't stop eating, right? Even the, even the marketers are like, once you... Once you take a bite, you can't stop, right? I, I know you're thinking of whatever that ad is. I'm trying not to say that ad. <laughs> but I mean, just like potato chips, right? And some cookies, those packaged things. They're like, oh my gosh. Or I'm not even hungry, but I really want to eat that, 
right? So you have stopped listening to your own hunger and satiety cues because it's it's habit it is um it is the way they're manufactured right so bringing our awareness to that and learning more about this is what's happening so i have to make a conscious effort to stop it i have to make a conscious effort to look at the labels and say okay what does this have in it and is this going to hijack my brain i might say this too many times hijack my brain but seriously, the, sh the sugar does. And, and I know too, I've spoken with some of you because I, I hear you, we like sugar, right? Evolutionarily, that's a good thing. That's what's kept us alive. But now we have this abundance. Uh, it's every, there's food everywhere. There's food in this building everywhere. Uh, there's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and, and our grocery stores are just packed right? But 70 to 80% of it is stuff you probably shouldn't be eating, right? We've talked about um, shopping the perimeter, or, you know, staying in with the produce and, and things like that. There's a whole other presentation that we can do. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more too about artificial sweeteners. That's on that. Uh, there's a green handout that I've given you um, that has like all the different names of sweeteners. Um, and that includes artificial sweeteners. We've got uh, the types that they are, how they're packaged, how you can purchase them, what they're made from, some additional information. And we're gonna talk about um, the sweetness, like uh, how much sweeter these sweeteners are than sugar. So if sugar was a one, on the scale, then uh, let's see. Um, I'm trying to find one that you know. Something like um, uh, saccharin, right? Saccharin is 300 times sweeter than sugar. 300 times. So it's not just the, the biological process that's happening in your body that matters. Um, which, I mean, that matters too, right? If you're having saccharin and you're like, oh, but look, this uh, doesn't have any calories in it, right? But what is it doing to your palate? Because how, how many people uh, in your household, like you try to cook something a little bit lower sugar, but this happens to me often, you're baking and, and you like it. You're like, oh, this is good. Like I can taste the bread or the muffin or whatever, and maybe you used applesauce or used banana or something like that, or you cut the sugar in half. Um, it's still sweet, but the other people around you are like, it's not sweet enough. Do you get that? Yeah, yeah, I do. Um, so, but we're messing with our palate, so we have to change our taste buds. We've got to pull those things back in, right? Um, so I'm going to show you today some smart ways to cut sugar. Also, my name is Brenda Morgan. I am a health coach nutritionist. I'm a personal trainer and, uh, I've been working with thrive well for probably about eight years or more. I've been in the fitness industry for more than 18 years or so. And, um, I also want to encourage you, all of the divas, all of the dudes, uh, go to the classes. Go to your fitness classes, your nutrition classes, your, um, uh, what else do we have? We have writing classes, we have hiking classes, right? Art. To be in art. art, yes, art. I always want to go to those arts. So Jose sends out uh, an e-blast every week right? And says everything that there is to do. And I'm like, I want to go hiking with you guys. And I want to do art. Just give me two more years. I'll be, I'll come, I'll be with you, right? Um, to be an active diva, you do three classes a week, right? And that can be fitness classes. There's, I teach Nia um, on Thursdays uh, uh, in Stone Oak, uh, at the Stone Oak YMCA. Uh, Nia is a combination of dance, martial arts, the healing arts. It's all about the joy of movement. I see some of my students here, but I see some more potential students here also. 
come check it out. We have fun. We love each other. And we have lots of space, too. We have lots of room to dance and have fun. Um, I also just want to let you know, uh, I am on the mayor, San Antonio Mayor's Commission for the Status of Women. And we are putting together a, uh, an event this weekend on Saturday. Come join us. Uh, this Saturday is International Women's Day. And at St. Philip's College in the Sutton Learning Center, we are putting together an event that uh, is just making it, showing women in San Antonio all of the opportunities for support that they have. So there's three basic pillars that we're working on. Uh, health is the subcommittee that I'm working on. Um, and that includes mental health, physical and mental health. So Thrive Well will be there uh, and uh, Powerhouse Bakery will be there. And then we also have uh, uh, supporting women in business. So they're gonna be taking headshots and they'll be building resumes and stuff like that. Uh, and also uh, domestic violence support and education too. So come on, it's from 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. And I've asked, I've given the information to Jose, so hopefully she'll put it in the e-blast. But if you wanna put that on your calendar, come join us, come check it out at St. Philip's College. All right, so what is sugar? We kind of talked about this a little bit last week. Um, glucose. So this would be a sugar molecule right here, right? Just one sugar molecule is glucose. That is how your body uses sugar. That's what your brain wants. Uh, that's what your body wants. That's what it can use. That's what your muscles want, right? Most of the forms that we consume sugar in uh, is going to be sucrose. That's two sugar molecules together, okay? And you'll get that like in cane sugar or beet sugar. Some fruits and vegetables all have sucrose. Uh, glucose is that one molecule. So some of the fruit, vegetables, and honey, uh, it will be like an instant uh, sugar release for you. And that's good. Sometimes you need the energy, right? It's just that when we eat too much of it and it builds up, then it gets stored as, as fat, right? It gets stored as fat if you have too much of it. So we gotta be aware of how much are we consuming. Um, lactose is another form of sugar that uh, you'll find mostly in dairy products and cheese. And then maltose is uh, what you'll find in uh, beers and alcoholic beverages, but mostly what you're going to be consuming here is sucrose. So how much or how little sugar is recommended? The World Health Organization recommends, now, sorry, added sugars, right? So eating fruit, eating carrots, um, eating other things that contain sugar naturally, as we've talked about in, in the other in the carbohydrate classes. And, uh, that's a good thing, right? Because there's the phytochemicals that we talked about, right? If you're eating fruit, if you're eating apple, there's fiber, there's vitamins, there's water. There's so many nutrients in fruits and vegetables. So you don't want to avoid those in order to have less sugar. Um, it's the added sugar that we're going to be talking mostly about today, right? So if you're looking at uh, a yogurt, you'll notice if you're looking at the label of a yogurt, you'll notice maybe it has, and I'm going by memory here, maybe 15 grams of sugar in it, right? It'll say it has 15 grams of sugar. And, but then right underneath, luckily our, uh, our labeling, laws have improved, so they have to tell you how much added sugar there is, right? So one of the things we'll talk about today is how much added sugar is an okay amount. It depends on how much you're eating as a, as a total, but I'll give you some rules of thumb. I like to, when I'm looking at a label, uh, I like to look for something that has like five grams of added sugar or less. That's kind of my rule of thumb. But it depends on how much uh, you're having. Like if you're having lots and lots of processed food and they all have five grams of added sugar, then that adds up, right? Um, 
but, uh, but sorry, going back to the yogurt, it might say it has 15 grams of sugar. That's because it's counting the lactose. Lactose is a sugar. It's a naturally occurring sugar in milk. That's okay. It's the added sugars that we're trying to pay attention to, right? So when I say here that the World Health Organization recommends 5% or less added sugar in your diet, that is what, that's what I'm talking about, right? Our U.S. Food and Drug Administration says uh, 10% or less. Why? Wait, hold on. I should have had this slide in, but I couldn't make that work. <laughs> Here, we'll go like this. And reveal. Yeah. Why? So I went to, op and this is when I get passionate, right? So I went to opensecrets.org. You can look up things. You can look up things like this. Where's the money going, right? Um, and it's on your slides too. So you can go play around in there and find out stuff you want to know open secrets about. Uh, but annually, annual lobbying on average, Coca-Cola, $4.5 million per year. Now, we need some lobbyists, uh, you know, like for the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, we have lobbyists that go in and say, hey, you need to fix the label on the food. Like you've got to, you've, you, we have a responsibility to tell people what they're eating. If we're going to produce all this um, uh, overprocessed food, we need to at least let people know, right? And we need to let them know in a way that own, that is easier to get than the nutritionists can understand, right? Because even for me, it's a massive amount of information. Um, so the National Restaurant Association, McDonald's, uh, Yum Brands. Do, do you guys know who Yum Brands are? That would be if Chick-fil-A, no, sorry, uh, Taco Bell, KFC, and something else. Pizza Hut, thank you. Taco Bell, KFC, Pizza Hut, right? American Beverage Association, Mars, chocolate. Starbucks, Chipotle, okay? So these are the top, some of the top lobbyists. So I'm not saying you can just make this decision on your own. Why the difference here? The World Health Organization? Food and Drug Administration. Uh, I mean, they, they use science too, right? But they also get pulled. Say it again. Right. Like health insurance. The, the, right. Exactly. You know, the, that, that's what's happening. So you can draw your own conclusions, but I'm just giving you some resource, resources. Okay, so what are the effects of added sugars on our body? These are just some. So I, all right, actually I was not planning this. Here, a little bit of a confessional. <laughs> I told you about my peanut butter problem, right? <laughs> All right. I like sugar a lot, right? So it's a hard habit to break. And some of you, I know, because we've talked about it. Yep, I see your faces. Um, we like the sugar. Um, but it might not be the best for our longevity, right? So I uh, have, I had printed out a a list of like 90 reasons not to eat sugar. Like when I was trying to like get off soda and get off added sugar and get off ice cream and get off. Now I'm not saying I don't do those things at all anymore, right? Just way less, right? And I pull out my sheets. It's like, it's probably about three pages, a list. Okay, tell me why. Ah, it's gonna give me wrinkles. Okay, maybe that's it. I mean, whatever's gonna speak to you, right? It's going to feed your cancer. That might speak to you. And so uh, maybe raising your tri triglycerides and your cholesterol, maybe that's the thing that makes you go, you know, or it's going to make you, uh, has anyone experience, else experienced this? You go and you have a great time and you have a lot of sugar, whatever it is, cake, cookies, whatever, the holidays, over the holidays. Do you notice 
more inflammation in your body. Like if you have arthritis, maybe your joints or things are not, or maybe it's just harder to get up in the morning. You're like a little bit hungover. Things like that, you know, are, are that's what's happening. Um, so the clogging of the arteries, right? We think of fat as the bad guy, but the clogging of the arteries, a lot of that comes from how the uh, sugar is processed uh, and uh, how it builds up that plaque in our arteries. And that's coming from sugar. Um, concerns with our heart. Weight gain, of course, right? The weight gain. Ah, you know what? Here's an interesting one here. Um, increased appetite. We've kind of touched on this a little bit here and there, but what happens when you do have that? So if you've ever had times when you have been eating like really well, you're on plan and you stay clean, whatever, your appetite is stabilized and you're aware of your body and what it's asking for. And then something happens and there's a lot of sugar or a lot of processed foods that become involved. Right. So you, uh, and you're feeling really good for a little while and then you, right. Um, it, because your sugar, your blood sugar drop, it's going to make you hungry or you're going to start munching, munching a little bit more to try to sustain that sugar level where, where it was. And sometimes we just kind of have to ride out that wave of yuckiness in order to be like, okay, now I'm going to have a nice salad with some good protein. Okay. Now we're back here. And then you, but just know, just bringing awareness to the fact that, okay, I'm going to eat this. I'm, I'm going to have these cookies, crackers, whatever it, it is. But just know that I'm going to go down. But that doesn't mean that you have to keep feeding it, right? You don't have to keep feeding the cycle. So increased appetite. Skin concerns, as I talked about, gives you wrinkles. <laughs> Diabetes, that's an obvious one. Uh, and, and the insulin resistance here is, is pretty much the same as, well, the diabetes is the advanced form of the insulin resistance, right? The more sugar that you keep putting in your body, the more, uh, your pancreas has to work and your pancreas could get tired, right? It's, it might not be releasing as much as insulin anymore, or there might be so much insulin in uh, glucose in your bloodstream that it stops going into the cells. So those are just, uh, and cavities too. I have, a, yes, a question? Uh, Non-enzymatic, so I think what they're talking about there is advanced glycation in products and I actually did, Actually, I put it up there and then I didn't talk about it because um, <laughs> so AGEs, advanced glycation end products, basically is um, when I talk about like getting wrinkles and stuff like that, what's happening is it's um, if I'm remembering correctly, what happens is the proteins in your body, they're getting more sugar that are attached to them and they're not performing as they would like uh they're they're not um sorry i'm having a bit of a mental block right now because <laughs> it, it's because it's very scientific and so i'm like trying to see in my head uh let me come back to it because uh i know the answer to this because <laughs> <laughs> just trying to figure out how to explain it to you in the least scientific -y way. Um, yeah, it, it's breaking down your protein or it's, it's attaching itself to your proteins more than it should. I, I will figure out a better way to explain that to you. Um, oh, and let's just talk about this addictive part of it. Some scientists say eight times more addictive than cocaine. It 
lights up the same center in your brain that cocaine does. Same. And here's the thing, and this is the part where I got all passionate. <laughs> My son was like, go. <laughs> um, here's the thing, is that we, uh, the food manufacturers know this, right? So, so th the thing about sugar is that it's socially acceptable, right? Besides even being socially acceptable, it's pushed. Your family is pushing it on you. They love you. And they're pushing it on you because you, they love you. I do it. I've done it. I did it. I love to bake, right? And so for the past few years, I'm like, I can't be a health warrior and bring people the cookies, <laughs> you know? I'm like, I can. I need to come up with a better way of doing that. Uh, so if that means that here, I'm going to bring you a whole wheat muffin that's made with um, carrot and apple and raisins with half the sugar or with applesauce or bananas or something like that. There's a way that we can do that. Um, but it, it's socially acceptable. It's okay for us because we're surrounded to eat all these processed foods because everybody else is doing it. There are, I mean, the all the buildings that are going up in my neighborhood and around, aren't they mostly like fast foods for you? Well, and some banks. <laughs> but mostly fast foods and the donuts. I'm like, why are there so many donut shops? Why? I mean, it's just, it's so much. Um, and And... We're going to get to this. One of the books I'm going to uh, recommend to you, there's a book called The End of Overeating by David Kessler. Um, it's on one of those slides for you, uh, but we'll talk about it more. I've got stacks of books to recommend if you really want to get into this and if you want to get upset too <laughs> about, about how... I just wonder what is the, where's the line, right? Business is business. I have a, I have a master's in business, right? I understand the economy of it, right? I get that. But where's the line? Where's the responsibility between public health, our civilization, how we're taking care of our people and watching them get sick with heart disease, with cancer, with diabetes and with all those things and then saying and putting whatever lobbying numbers we're putting into that and, um, and, and taking care of our people, right? Why do, why do our children have ADHD? Why do all of our children have ADHD? Okay, well, there's also video games too. <laughs> there's that. But we're feeding them all the sugar. We're feeding them all these excitotoxins, these processed foods that are not allowing them to sit in their chair and pay attention, right? There's also social things, right? This is all very complex. That's why I'm not even going to get through this presentation. <laughs> There's a lot to talk about. But I hope you're feeling that passion. I hope that you're understanding, and I'm going to keep giving you information. I've got a question back there. Right, right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. You can get your whole. You can get your donuts from Whole Foods. Go to powerhouse. Go to powerhouse. Okay. So good. So that and so so what she's saying is, um, what part of you know we're we're gonna eat some of those things and uh, what are some better options? But what part does the government have in in that? What role do they play in saying this, not that? Um, and I think that it comes down to us voting. First of all, you guys being here and educating yourselves, right? So you educate yourselves and you're like, oh, wow, I didn't realize. And then you, then you go out and you vote with your dollars. So every time, so that's why, I mean, Whole Foods is doing great right? Because people are becoming educated and they're trying to move away from those things. But you can go to regular grocery stores also with your knowledge, with your power, 
and make better choices too. So you don't have to go the more expensive route. And that's one of the things that, I mean, we could, we can do a, a whole, uh, class on eating better on a budget, right? So it's just a matter of knowledge. And you were saying too about, you know, like if we baked something on our own, we would do it with butter and sugar, right? But then we're looking at 61 different names for sugar that are being hidden in our foods. Then we're talking about the artificial sweeteners that are um, has anyone ever heard of G-R-A-S, generally recognized as safe? Thank you. That's what I say. Someone laughed. <laughs> uh, generally recognized as safe. The artificial sweeteners that hopefully we'll get to talk about today, um, those, many of them are generally recognized as safe. That is the label that they put on them. And then someone laughed. I know, right? I'm like, I'm not sure. Nobody's died yet. It'll be fine, <laughs> you know? But then, well, then we're just going to move on to, we're just going to go on here. Awesome. Yes. Are you I'm kind of rolling on the artificial sweetener thing. Let me just say this really fast and I'll get you. Um, uh, then there's articles, truth about artificial sweeteners that one of the divas has sent to me. Um, and this is why this presentation was so difficult for me to put together because there's so much information and a lot of it is new. So if I'm going to present something to you, then I'm going to take the time and I'm going to go into PubMed and I'm going to look at those research papers as much as I can and see, is this reliable information? Because when I get, my husband just sent me this an hour before we came here. Artificial sweet. I'm going to say this with like, this is what he sent to me, but I'm also going to say this is an article from the Washington Post, right? This is written by a journalist. What happens sometimes with uh, research studies is the journalist will pick it up and they'll be like, this is a good story. Okay. But it might, you know, it might not have all that scientific backing and you want to have lots and lots of research studies, not just one. So I'm just going to say this, what he just sent to me an hour ago, artificial sweetener links to higher heart attack risk, study says. It might be true. We don't know yet. Uh, generally recognized as safe. I'm not even going to tell you what the sweetener is because I, because we need to figure this out but are you willing to take those chances is the question is the question i'm asking whoo i'm on a roll are you guys okay with the direction i'm going here because whoo i have another question yeah Brenda, i'm looking at this green sheet green sheet yes okay aspartame yep Yep. Are you saying that where it says sweetness in that mm -hmm. green uh, sheet, 1.5 versus 180 for the aspartame? So uh, the sweetness, so on, on this sheet mm -hmm. where it says sweetness, say that the, the, the mouth sweetness of sugar mm -hmm. is a one. So just sugar, that would be sucrose, okay. is a one. The number that says uh, 180, that is how much sweeter it would be per, like say per gram, right? So say you have a gram of sugar, it's gonna give you a one sweetness. If you had a gram of aspartame, it would give you 180 sweetness. That's how many more times it is sweeter than sugar. Yes, agave we're talking about, huh? So, but how are they both four calories per gram? Aha! Because one is a chemical and one is a sugar. So, if you look at, yeah, because you're just going by, by taste, right? So, that's why, like, uh, it, yeah, if we get to it, um, it, let's talk about stevia, right? There's a stevia li leaf, right? Stevia is very, very sweet. 
but it's a more natural occurring uh, sweetness, right? Depending on what form you get it in, and, and we can get to that also. Um, but it's much sweeter than sugar, but it doesn't have calories. Okay. It doesn't have calories. So, so if you're looking at like, well, saccharin, right? Everybody's pretty much familiar with sweet and low. Here, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump ahead. We're, we're just gonna jump around here. Mm -hmm. She's saying that a lot of diabetic foods will have artificial sweeteners in them, right? Because they're saying this isn't going to, it doesn't have calories, so it won't raise your blood sugar. But it's a chemical, right? And my, and my children from, yeah, it's an oxymoron. My children from little, from when they were very, very little, you know, we go to a restaurant or something like that, and there's the sugar packets. They like to pay, play with the packets, right? I'm like, this is a chemical. I'd rather you have sugar. That's my preference, right? Those are the decisions that you have to make for yourself is, is it more important to me? Is my diabetic state or my insulin resistant state a point where I, the simple sugar is not the good choice for me, but I want a little bit of sweetness, but maybe stevia is a better choice for you. Maybe, and actually I'm gonna let you, I'm just gonna pass these around. These are monk fruit drops. And this is actually monk fruit in a powder blend. Just so if, if you guys just want to see some of that, I'm sure you've seen these in the grocery store already. Um, I just wanted to make you familiar with a couple of better so far options, right? Now it depends on how they're processed. And one of the things we were going to talk about uh, when it comes to the stevia in the monk fruit is that uh, if you get like, oh, let's talk about this, Truvia. So Truvia is a refined form of stevia. It's removed from its origins by the refinements. It also contains erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol. Some people with sugar alcohol, uh, erythritol, with sugar alcohols, um, some people get a GI upset with that. So I'm not saying that sugar alcohols are not the way to go. I'm saying that uh, you have to figure that out for yourself. Now, the one. It can make people drunk. I can just say by the chemical compound of, of those things that there's probably not enough in it to make that happen. It is a sugar alcohol. And I do know people that that are trying to get rid of alcohol in their that not to drink alcohol and they're like i can't do sugar alcohols either but i mean it's too insignificant the the amount is too small i think um but that's the thing is people can have adverse reactions to very very small amounts of things so you have to figure out what works for you the one thing that i will put down on the sugar alcohols um, if you're looking at your green sheet at the very end of your green sheets is xylitol which is a sugar alcohol, but it actually has been shown to improve your dental health. Oh, yeah. It's in sugarless gums. It's in some sugarless gums. You actually have to look for it um, because I, was, I went through a phase of doing that when my children were very young and my dentist was wonderfully educating us um, that xylitol, um, I was going through every single package on the, uh, of gum on the shelf trying to find the ones that had xylitol, because a lot of them end up having erythritol or zorbitol, um, which I'm not saying is bad either. I'm just saying that I was looking for the xylitol because it actually is improves your dental health. Just one thing, based on what I heard on you, Julia is probably the one they're talking about in that article. So, yeah, okay, so the reveal. I haven't been able to research this. I only got this an hour ago. It's okay. You know what? And this is how we disseminate information, right? So all I'm going to say is we're going to talk about this and then you go find out more. 
you do what is best for you. So I haven't had a chance to completely read it, but I did, of course, look and see what are they talking about. And they are on the artificial sweetener linked to higher heart attack risk. They are talking about erythritol. Um, but that's because that's what they were studying, right? Could be any of the sugar al alcohols. It's just that so many people are consuming Truvia now because it's got stevia in it. But the one thing I will say is if you're going to do stevia, see if you can find it in a high in a, a less refined form. So go to either the natural part of your uh, of your grocery store or go to like a, a supplement store and get a, the liquid form of it, a liquid form or a less refined powder form. OK, because this really, even though it says stevia, it's not it's been refined so much that it's not really anymore. It wouldn't be like, you know, because we think, oh, I'm going to get some stevia just like I'm chewing on a leaf. It's fine. <laughs> so, I mean, just to just to uh, give you an opportunity to learn and to. Um, there was an article about zero calorie sweetener linked to heart attack and stroke. And it says here, erythritol used to add bulk or sweeten stevia, monk fruit and keto reduced sugar products has been linked to blood clotting, stroke, heart attack and death. According to a new study, to a new study linked <laughs> to blood clotting, heart attack, mm -hmm. and death, and stroke. and stroke. Right, exactly. So that's why we then we have to make that decision. How much at all what works for me? Right. What it, it yeah, what it what decisions are you making for yourself? So since we are out of time, I knew this was going to happen. I'm really, really sorry. Um, since we are out of time, I'm going to fly through some of this really quickly. And you also have the slides, OK? So take a minute, look at those. I've given you some better options. Honestly, I've told you how much I love sugar, but I've really gotten to the point now where I've changed my taste buds. And that sweet at night is an apple or berries or something like that, right? Um, and, or the dark chocolate, which we talked on Valentine's Day about dark chocolate, right? So just getting your taste buds to where you can be satisfied with a little bit less, a little bit less and take it back in baby steps. When I was quitting uh, soda a long time ago, like she was talking about, yeah, once a week, there's still going to be something like that. Well, I've got it down to two or three weeks. <laughs> you know, but little by little and I and I actually will mark it on the calendar. I'm saying, OK, it's been it's been uh, 14 days. OK, next time I'm going to go 15 days without the sweet or whatever that thing is, just because we're all trying to get better. Right. We're all trying to. We're all trying to spiral up. But wait, before I leave you. I want to just give you a film recommendation that uh, one of our divas, uh, I just put her first name. I don't know if it's okay to say the whole, whole name. Yes, yes. I, I, I typed your whole, oh, yes. I, I typed your whole name and then I was like, da, da, nah, 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 nah. Uh, that sugar film, there's lots of these out there right now, right? There's, uh, there's lots of documentaries that are talking about the food industry and the processing and what's happening. This one's quite entertaining. And he's Australian. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but also, and these are in your slides too, so you guys can take them home if you want to. Uh, leave the uh, papers that you don't want. Uh, take what you want. But The Case Against Sugar, this is actually an older book, but uh, still very relevant. Uh, when I say older, like maybe it's 10 years old. Um, salt, Sugar, Fat, many of you have heard of this. And I think there's also a documentary or a movie that goes, or a series. I think there's a series for this one. Um, David Kessler, The End of Overeating. This one, who this one really gets in, and it's, an, it's a newer book. It really gets into the science about, sorry, not the science as much as... Um, 
affirming what we're already believing that all of these restaurants where you're eating, um, they're actually, they'll fry something and then they ship it off to all of their branches and then they fry it again, right? And it's delicious. <laughs> it's not good for you. Bliss point, bliss point, right? Bliss point, what's that perfect amount? A little bit, something could be, uh, uh, something can be fried. It can be like a fried chicken strip or something like that. It's got some sugar in it probably, right? And then I've just put also, um, I really like Mark Hyman a lot and he's created a lot of books and he uh, starts with this blood sugar solution. He's got like, I think it's like a 10 day. Anyway, he has like some programs that are kind of help you for, for those of us who need, I've actually done his stuff to try to get that, that habit of too much sugar out of our systems, right? Um, oh, and then another expose, The Unsavory Truth, uh, Marion Nessel. She is also a PhD food scientist that really talks a lot about the food industry and the processed foods and, and what we're eating. Um, and I just want to be respectful of your time. Thank you so much for letting me, I'm going to have to take, I'm going to have to rest after this. <laughs>